Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Deku Farm Academy. Can you see that picture? Everybody, can you see that picture? What do you notice? Hmm? When I saw this picture, I actually picked interest. A single tree, what is he doing? And I wish that we should not be selfish after this training. Do you get my point? Yes. If a single tree, and that is the vision and the mission of Beko Farm. Remember yesterday I said that we are out to train how many people? 10 million people in Africa, in Africa. And how we can achieve this is, as we have come to train you, you should go and train another person. Wait for uh, like 15 minutes break or 10 minutes break, I think yesterday I actually changed us. So today, I psychologically, I discovered yesterday that uh, all of us were not uh, you know, along the line. We were not following because we are much. But most times, we there are times I go for training. I will sit from eight o'clock till six in the evening. Chain. Yeah, because when you pay a huge amount of money, you need to sit down. You need to concentrate. Mm. This one, you know what? One of the good thing is that you don't pay for it. I think so. So nothing has left you. But when you pay like a 50k for what just one training, so would you like your 50,000 to go? No. So you must concentrate. So even when sleep comes, you say, my eyes open. <laughs> because you still remember your money. So, but don't abuse the fact that you are not paying the money and you just want to, you know, but that's why I just want, just we can walk around here, meet a friend, interact, ask him, is your village, which crop are you into, share, you know, ideas and all those things. That's how we relax. I have a lot of friends from the West, Ogun State, Ibadan, all those areas that we, we relax. So among you people here, you can relax. Go and visit someone farm. Don't assume you know everything. Because that's our problem. Don't assume you know everything. So I will be going for, you know, break. In the next 10 minutes, we will be back. Please don't go. It's not that I'm begging you to stay. Do you understand my point? Because after today, my own has finished. But I think we are interested in you becoming something. That's our interest. So please stay around. God bless you all. May the Lord be with us. Right. We're going to look at uh, the effective pest and disease management in vegetable farming. Effective pests, as insect pests and uh, disease management. All right, introduction. I hope you are taking, just go, go back to the other one. I think the second or the first slides. I just brought this up so that you can see. Can we identify those pests? Do we used to see them in our farms? Yes. Some. Some. Some, yeah. Yeah. These white flies, I think it will come up again. These white flies. This one is common. And you know this man, whether man or woman, I think it's both man or woman. They are both products, so they are both. You, you know that they can destroy your farm. Yes. Especially during this rainy season. Do people have swampy area in the Biona? Yeah. Feel close here. Yeah. So how do people use it? Because some of you that are talking about water, 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 water. Currently, in my area, swampy area is costly. To, to get land to cultivate in the swamp is costly than the upland. We started it. They abandoned the swamp. But we needed to go and start using it. The other day I was telling my elder brother, I said, if our late father comes back to life, he will be shocked. Sure. Seeing the land that you know they were not using very well the way we are using it today. So if there are areas that you have river, just get pumping machine. Do you know me I'm using uh, my the water I'm using for my farm now is about uh, nine pole distance. Nine pole distance, but I connect, I link water down there. The money I spent to do that was costly than to dig a bubble. But I wanted to change the mentality of people in the environment. 
That was why I did that. So, each pole is about uh, 50 meters. So if you multiply 50 by 9, that's four, about 450 meters distance. But we send the water. If possible, when we get there tomorrow, I would, we would trade to me I'm getting the water so that you can understand some of these things I'm saying. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not speaking to motivate you. I'm speaking the reality so that you can see. So we have resources around, just like I started the, the, the Bible passage about issue of uh, Abraham, um, Agai, and Ish Ishmael. God has blessed us naturally in our environment, but most times we don't know what we can do with those things. Okay, so this one is common. This one is common. This one is common. The other one is common. This, the caterpillar is the cut one. The beetle is common. And spider mites. Those in pepper. This is the man that deal with you guys in pepper farming. Spider mites can destroy your whole farm. Okay? So we will explain them when we get down to when we will talk about them one after the other. Let's the next slide. But that is the, the topic. Apart from soil and weather-related issues, currently we start having problems of weather that is seriously affecting farmers. Like few last this week, the break of rain. So someone that didn't have source of water, he has affected. Even me that I have source of water, but because we didn't, we had a lot of work to do in the farm, so we didn't plan something putting water. So within these days, my plan was actually suffering a lot of things. Okay. So, okay. apart from soil and weather related issues, pests and diseases are twins brothers. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Most of the disease is caused by the pests, yes. like white flies, yes. that carrier of disease. Most of, apart from water and maybe the food we eat, without mosquito. We won't have this problem of malaria. I think so. Yeah. So that is exactly what is happening to the crop. So pests and disease are twin brothers. They work together to deal with us in our farm. That can make or mar your agricultural work production. So they can either make or mar it in any given area, especially when it comes to vegetable farming. Next, disease and pests can constrain your effort. You try, but at the end of the day, nothing to show. And that's the, 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 you know, the worst part of it. And since can, that there are many farmers that this thing has set, has set them back. Like in, in our area, during the dry season, that's from November to around uh, March, many people who were not equipped and they run into Kimba farming, they had a lot of challenges. And one only thing we got Kimba is if you have your own farm here and you are doing well, you have a neighbor close to you and it's not doing well, you spread your farm finish. Some of those pests will fly out to your neighbor's farm waiting for you. So after you finish praying, they come back. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to have farm planting the same crop within, what I advise, like in the area I am, I coordinate them. We spread the same time. If I spray my own today and you don't spray your own, get ready to attack. Because, because I have sprayed my own, all of them will do what? Will come to the available farm to attack. And mind you, that they are not wicked. That is their place. So you just go to chase them out. They must resist. So not that they are wicked. That's where they live. For instance, if someone comes to your house to attack you, would you allow the person to defeat you? So that's what makes. Does. So don't see them as if maybe they don't know what they are doing. Insects are able to detect and lay their egg on crops or very close to it. Why? Now, for instance, now if the nearby farm, you know, most time even in our farm, under the leaf they lay egg under the leaves. Like my brother was saying, what he experienced after the training yesterday. They lay egg under the leaves. When we we'll get to a point, I'll show you how they can manipulate you in your farm out of ignorance you don't know. And you are even helping them to grow. That's true. 
You're even helping them to grow your farm. Now, what, what is crop paste? Any living organism or thing that causes damage, any living organism, like even the egg snail that we eat, but when it comes to this, because it causes damage, it becomes what? Pest. Pest. It becomes pest. Are we together? Yes. Anything that causes discomfort. Now, if you are sleeping in a house that there is mosquito, would you be comfortable? No. And the worst part of it is those ones that used to make noise. They may not even come near you, but they will be making noise. Yes. And you will not be able to see someone like me. I can't even sleep until I will just get up to make sure that I kill it. Yes. So the same way your plants are not comfortable when there are pests in your farm. So for you to help your plant to be comfortable, you must take care of what? The pests in the farm. So any living organism or thing that causes damage, discomfort, or destruction to crops in the field or store products. Most times we accuse the Northerners that they poison bees and send to us. Do we hear that? Yes. Most times this accusation is not really true. But the problem that we normally have, those of the, 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 the bees that they preserve, maybe for planting, there are some preservative, you know, chemicals that they will put. Sometimes if people go there and steal those things in their storehouse, they bring it and sell. It's like it's a poison. In fact, it's a poison, but it's not very great. And sometimes they may even put those chemicals to preserve those things for their own planting. And when you buy and eat, it becomes a problem. Are we together? Yes. So apart from those ones in the farm, most often too, we also, in a way, try to preserve our own thing. And the, the enemy, like our corn. Most some people try to keep corn. We call it farmers safe seeds. For them to plant in another year. But most times, do they even plant that corn? No. Before you go back, what happens? Let's finish it. So it's not only in the farm that pests can attack, even the one in the storage, pests can also attack. Insect pests are grouped as follows. They have group. So they are grouped as follows. The chewing and that the chewing pest, insect pests. Those ones that can chew, you know, not all of them can chew. Like uh, white flies, they don't even eat the crop. Aphid. They don't even eat the crop. But do you know what they do? They sap the nutrient. They sap the nutrient. It's just like a, a, this thing we call it a parasites. So when they stay on the leaf, so any, any nutrient, yes, that the, the plant is taking up, they get it back, they sap. That's why sometimes the yellowish of the leaf also caused by them. That's when the issue of fungicide comes to play. How many of you use fungicide in your farm? Okay, use fungicide. Okay. Which type? Which type of fungicide? I cannot recall it. Wow. I What? DD4. I know DD4. That's pesticide. That's not fungicide. DD4 is pesticide. But most often, sorry, I I just saw the thing we do is online. What are calamity? Yeah, uh, most times I don't like to discuss. The, 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 the chemical because the company may seem like they are trying to destroy their products and all those things. Okay? So like the caterpillar, when the caterpillar enters your farm, what happened? They chew. So they are among the chewing insects. Okay? The grasshopper. Especially those ones that are coming out new. The grasshopper can finish it. Cricket is another wicked one. Cricket. It can even destroy the whole farm. So the cricket, the beetle, and their they are ball. That is their lava stage. Their lava stage. I will show you some of those ones at the lava stage. The less. Then the sucking one. 
You have, remember when I was talking about the aphid? I said they suck, they suck the nutrient. But they won't eat, the leaves here remain as if nothing happened. But here they have filtered the nutrient, and before you know, the plants start becoming yellowish. The paper will not progress. Yes. Stunted roots. Okay, so we have the deer, the aphid, the leaf hopper, the sting ball, the white flies, the trips, the mites, you know, all of them in that group. So they are under the sucking. Let's move on. So those ones that are under sucking. So the, those other ones, they can chew. And that is the one that we easily notice because. When you go and you discover that the leaves of your plant, something has been tampered with, that's when you notice. But those ones that are sappy, we don't easily notice those ones. And the, the funny part of it, they operate under the leaves. Now, thank God at least you went to the farm to experiment what we learned. Okay, so at least you tell other people. Okay. Most times we mix these diseases together, but there are groups. Bacteria. If you are suffering from uh, um, typhoid, you take malaria drugs, will it cure? No. no. So you need to study some of these things to know which one is bacterial disease, which one is virus disease, which one is another one? Fungi disease. Okay, you read it. Right? Okay, I think you are trying to do well. I love that. So when you don't understand which one is fungal disease, viral disease and bacterial disease, you may not also know the chemical to apply. Let's go on. It's like I'm fast. Am I fast? Okay. Right. Most of the soil one crop disease belong to this group. Also, most of the, all right, let's go down. There are areas I want to explain with pictures. Viral disease. Viral disease, you know, for instance, like in uh, tomato is very much serious today. Just like a, what do we solve now? The disease that is viral. Eh? Yeah. Cor <laughs> coronavirus. If you touch someone, according to the medical people, what happened? You transfer. If my farm is affected by virus and B2, the one with doctors something comes into my farm and fly out to your farm. What has happened? He has transferred it to your farm. So before you know, the problem start coming up. If I visit your farm, let it be that you have this virus problem in your farm. If I visit your farm, maybe walk around your farm, my clothes happen to touch the leaves of your crop. And I get back to my farm. If I didn't have it in my farm, what do I do? <laughs> do you know this before that it can happen that way? Yes. So, if your farm is not protected, don't easily go to people's farm and come back. Like before you will come tomorrow, we will spread our farm as preventive. <laughs> because we may not know someone who wants to rush and see his own farm before coming. And I don't know what is in your farm, so don't bring it to my own farm. So we must build up resistance to whatever. And most often, we don't allow people access like that to our farm, especially when we know you're a farmer. There's what we call swamp fever in pig. How many of you are into pig? Pig, pig, pig farm. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Swamp fever. Wow, it's a serious problem to pig. So it's also those people that come around to buy the pig to buy and sell, they also carry it along. So most often, if you want to sell your pig, you even remove it and come out for them to price. So that it will not cause problems. So anything virus is virus, whether to human being or to plant, is spread so simple. Okay. I think I've bring, I have brought it home so that for us to have a better understanding. Let's go. Epic, leaf binders, and other things, nematodes. All right, let's take time and deal with it. Can we see them? Can we see it fine? Not very fine. I, I think the mistake I made, I would have put one one when I was here. I would have leave one of it. I put one. This one may not be very common. So let's not talk about this one. It may not be too common to us. But let's look at this one, trees. This is 
the adult. Can you see it? Yes. This is what? Yes. Now, it would come to a point that as a result of their operation, they lead to this. That's why I said in my mind that are twins. Without these guys, this problem will not come. Are we together? Yes. Without drinking bad water or eating fruits that <laughs> is not balanced, without mosquitoes, issue of mal malaria will not be there. Is it true? Yes. So without these guys, so if you take care of these guys, these ones, we don't have much problem with these ones. These are diseases. So the best thing is whatever you can do to make sure that you pursue these guys from your farm. And this one, remember yesterday when I was talking about uh, the cycle of metamorphosis? Sometimes the complete or the incomplete. So some of them would, from the adult, they would lay egg from the egg to the larva stage, the pupa stage, they return to adult and they multiply. If you see like a I don't know how many of you have noticed beetle in your farm before. Beetle. Most times you discover that this one will turn the back and face this one. And they are mating in your farm. Have you witnessed that before? Yes. They are mating in your farm. They are not afraid. Yes. We need a twinkle of an eye. They don't multiply and they destroy your farm. So you don't give them room for them to do that. Alright. So look at some of the crops that they, they attack, Kokimba, that is under Koku beets, you know, family. And what do they, do they attack? The leaves. So this how to manage them. You must monitor the, your farm. What? The regular monitoring. It's not just, hey, just look around. Like my brother was saying, he said, each time he goes to his farm, you see that everything is going on when he left. But yesterday, he went and turned the back and he started noticing those things. So, you must monitor it always. You can even use, you know, and picking. You plow. When you are plowing your, your farm, some of these things, you discover, for instance, if there was something like lizard that lay egg in your farm, if you are plowing your farm, will you notice it? Yes. Would you notice it? Yes. yes, you notice it. So that some of these diseases, or this space, that's the activities are on, on the soil. So when you plow or you till your soil, you easily notice their presence. You easily notice their presence. So you can use a plastic mulch. Plastic mulch. I don't know how to explain that. And I don't think I have a video of a photo of it. Just like something like this. They, you cover your bed with a nylon. With a nylon. Most time, if it is the, the ash color one, the reflection. Let me give you one secret. This plate that they normally insert in your DVD and play. How many of you have the condemned one? The condemned one. Do you know that can stay away place from your fan? You don't know. The reflection. When you hang it in your fan, the shining part of it. The reflection will scare away pests from your farm. But some of us we throw them away. There's nothing that as a man, there's nothing that is worse again. Nothing. We call everything byproduct. Byproduct. Something that is worse to you may be a byproduct to me. To use it to do something. So when you use it and it's, it's take care of this. Like they are using mulch, uh, planting mulch. Apart from that, you will not protect grasses from, you know, coming out. You will not stop the uh, evaporation of water through sunlight. But it can scare away some pests from your farm. Are we together? Yes. Then you must with your your farm very fine. I show an example of how a farm should look like. Then, then you must spray your farm very fine, like new extracts that the leaf oil or any other one early in the morning you spray insecticide you know that has do you know an uh, imiforce how many of you use imiforce this is the active ingredient i was trying to talk about active ingredient this is the active ingredient in imiforce and something like a sharpshooter 
um, carrots, and other one. This is the active ingredient, lambda chlorobatine. Lambda chlorobatine. When you buy any of this, either insecticide or pesticide, you will see in the pack written active ingredient. So you now know. If you go and carry any other pesticide that doesn't have this active ingredient and spray on this thing, you are wasting your time. Are we together? Yes. And let me also say something here. That most of the pests build up resistance. If the only malaria tablet you are taking is pialaxin in your life, a time will come that it will not work again. Are we together? Yes. What has happened? Resistance. So when you keep, since you know that DD force is a pesticide, the only pesticide you are using in your farm is DD force. A time will come that you spread DD force, it will even become a booster to the pest. Because I used to eat, it will not be effective again. So in my farm, if I spray this one this week, next week I will use another one. The other week I will use another one. So before I repeat, I maintain like three weeks before I repeat. Again, yes. Let's take this the now one. I hope it's well explained. Yes. Okay. Now, this is B2. I hope you have seen this one. Have you been seeing that one? Your fan, your fiber fan. So you can't see it very fine. Yes. Okay. This, this is dotted B2. This is dotted B2. This is the lava stage. So the same thing is applicable. They they, they attack the leaf. So the same way you will control it, the other one you also use the same way to control. The other one is also B2, but that is squash B2. So it may not really be common to some of us because we are not into cabbage. That one attack cabbage, so serious. Okay, let's go on. Spider mites, red spider mites. This one attack your pepper. Those new leaves that comes up. I'm a eater. Yes. You yes. yes. like so okay about. Yes. So this the first thing that does it. And can, I don't know. This is a picture of a farm that has been attacked, but it's not showing very well here. It's not showing very well. But this is how it looks like when they attack. That's how it looks like. So I can't even put it alone because I know it's a, a most challenge. And it also affects egg, eggplant. You know what's about eggplant? Yeah. Nya. Nya, that's an egg. That's an egg. Nya. That's what it's called eggplant. So it also affects the eggplant very well. So this is how you can handle it. Part of the, you know, the plant it affects the leaves and the fruit. That's where it affects. I, I think we can see this one very fine. Yes. You remove the damaged leaves and fruits. Don't allow it to be. Just remove it. It will go a long way to help. You don't spray botanical insecticide like the neem. Hot pepper. You can plant hot pepper and be using it as your pesticide. But the only challenge is you need to protect yourself very fine. Because you ask yourself a question. Sometimes, if mistakenly, the pesticide you are using, you know, pour on you. How do you feel? Peprish. So that means most of them have this. Where is it? Okay. Most of them have the paper content. So if you are using your paper, it goes a long way also. But not all the paper. It doesn't do any move. There's what we call chili paper. How many of you know chili, chili paper? That's okay. yeah. mm. that is, this our local nyong nyong to a level. Those are the kind of people we are talking about. Yeah. Chili yeah. 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 pepper, not to a level because they are just very hot. Okay, fruit worm. That one is also very common. Fruit worm, it attacks the, the fruit. Like in your own farm, eggplant, that's got the egg. This one also attacks your farm. Yeah, yes. It attacks the fruit. Yeah, the fruit. Yes. So now, when this guy, the adult ones, will just get to your farm, yes. it will pierce. It's not that it will enter. This part of it will pierce inside the fruit, and it will lay egg. Yes. Sometimes when the, the fruits are very small, it will lay egg. Yes. If the egg will take like seven days 
like three days, depending to ash. So when you pluck it and you want to eat it, what you notice inside is what? Small maggots. Small maggots. That is the, the larva stage. And when that happens, you'll be shocked how it enters because there will be no sign in the body. The body may look very fresh, but the inside is contaminated. I even discovered it on the stem. Oh, even, yes, even in the stem. That's why sometimes you will notice that your plant will be standing and suddenly the, the leaves start to wilt thing. That is what happened. So if you remove it and check the stem, you may see something like that. That's, That's the lava stage, yes. But most of us, when we just go and see it, we don't do anything. And when you don't kill them, they will turn to adults. They will metamorphose to adults and continue to attack your farm. So the best thing is for you to attack them at that time. Okay. When they attack your farm, this is how it looks like. And the, the funny part of it is this one. They still operate under the leaves. They still operate under the leaf. I think I have a picture that may show more than this. So after this, I will try to see if we can project that one. Okay, so this is how a feet also operates. Look at how you can manage it. Sometimes you uproot those crops. You remove them entirely so you can treat them. Okay. Then the other one, the hopper. The hopper most times affects uh, leafy vegetables. Go back. Like this. Sometimes it is it could better it here. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Now I'm going to be tired. In fact, you will just finish it. I don't know. If you enter your farm very tiny, before the day ends, because they are skitting enough. So you need to actually take care of that. Okay, let's. <coughs> okay. There's this thing people sell. They will buy a label. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, we have it in the shop. Why flies like something yellow? So when you have a problem of white flies in your farm, just get this thing. He has a, a nylon attached to it. So just remove the nylon. It becomes gummy. You can see it. That is an example. So any insect that gets down there, what happened? It traps. So it can drop as many. It can drop as many. So this is another effective way to control insects in your farm. To control pests is for you to monitor your farm. Monitor your farm. Now let me cite an example in the scripture. Immediately Solomon asked God for what God should do for him. He, he, he made a sacrifice. So after the sacrifice, God asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, I need wisdom. And immediately he received the wisdom. The first challenge Solomon had, what was the first challenge? Yeah, you are real Christians, not just church goers. Those two women came to her. I said, look at the story of that woman. I love that woman, even though she was hello. It was only two of us that were in that house. I woke up to feed my to breastfeed my child, and I looked. Behold, it was not my child. But do you know that there are so many careless women that would have accepted the dead child to be their child? Yes. Do you agree with me? Yes. The only thing that saved the woman was she recognized her child, even though the child was just a few days. Yes. So when she looked at the child, she said, no, this is not my child. And it means that that woman admitted and start, started shouting, hey, my child has died, though. The other woman would have defeated. Yes. But she said she looked at her child. He wasn't a child. She kept the child without making noise. In the morning, she looked again and realized it wasn't her child that was the dead child. Yes. And the other one was seeing, you know, someone that is not of God, how they can talk. Yes. She was rightly talking, blah, blah. The wisdom of God said, let's divide the child. A mother who carried the baby for nine months. 
would have the mind to say, let the tribe be divided. Can it happen? No. no. It can happen. Yes. So, the other one said, yes, let's divide. In other words, let our child also die like my own. Yes. <laughs> the other one said, my king, may you live forever. Instead of dividing this child, give it to her. I know that blood is thicker than water. One day, this my child will look for me as the mother. And by the wisdom of God, Solomon said, give this child to this, this is the right mother. Now, why do I bring this story? The woman was able to monitor the child. That was why she didn't make the mistake of accepting what supposed not to be her own. If you don't monitor your farm and get used to your farm, as you are walking around, you know, where is that one bending? Not good at that, you may have serious problems. It is from there that you'll be able to spray your farm. When you notice anything of that nature, make sure that you take prompt action. You don't wait. Prompt action immediately so that everything can occur very well. Spray your farm as often. Sometimes we are not able to spread your farm once in a week. But the truth of the matter is, what if after spraying and it's not effective, after what 24 hours you can re-entry, you can go back and spray the farm. Sometimes at the end of the day, after spraying, great fall. So you need to repeat. When you notice like white flies, that is difficult to control. So when you have much attack of white flies, you can run your farm spraying like two times a week. Let me say a few things before we end this topic. Most of us are too careless with chemicals. The producer will tell you this chemical has a withdrawal period of seven days. And you know that your cooking bar is at the fruiting stage, that you are harvesting it every two, two days or two times in a week. And you carry the chemical that has seven days withdrawal period and spray. What are you causing to the site? Eh? Oh God. It's, it's deadly. Some would even have 20, 21 days of withdrawal and you are spraying it and you are harvesting it. Sometimes we may call it ignorant, but you have had it today. So if you do it again, it's not ignorant again. It's wickedness, is it not? 